Where do I start with teaching my Great Dane its name? This video is for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Great Dane Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the Great Dane and then how to become a high level canine leader so that you can raise your very own Great Dane. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload right here. Teaching your Great Dane its name is a crucial part of its training, as it's kind of where you start of moving on to all the other elements of training. So today we're going to be tuning into a webinar that Will, the CEO and founder of FenrirK9Leaders.com, recorded of teaching you how to teach your dog its name. So welcome back to another quick fire breakdown of a very common question that you will get from new puppy owners, whether you're interested in working as a dog trainer, even canine behavior work gets this question quite commonly, or even if you're just watching this because you're trying to get yourself to become a high level canine leader and you want to kind of understand more of the theory around this thing. So most people get dead excited about getting their new puppy and they have the name planned out long before the puppy comes home. And they tend to go into the process of teaching their dogs name completely naively if I want to be honest and use maybe a little bit of a harsh term with it and what we absolutely must start with when it comes to teaching a puppy its name and teaching it its name so that it's an effective tool that as a high level canine leader we can utilize every single day is we must have an excellent comprehension and an understanding that a dog has no comprehension and understanding that it has a name nor is there any amount of training even the best obedience trainer in the world can't teach a dog to understand understand the concept of it having a name what we need to understand is that a name to a dog is nothing more than an additional command again i think one of the reasons so many people struggle with their dogs right now is because of anthropomorphization which if you didn't know what that term means it means basically attributing human-like behaviors or emotions to an animal um, too many people are treating their dogs like children and babies and they baby them and they utilize their name in in that kind of fashion and we need to remember that when we talk we have language and communication not only are we speaking a foreign language to a dog at least when we're when you hear someone speaking a foreign language you get the concept oh they're communicating just in a language i don't understand a dog has zero comprehension that that's even a formal methodology of communication and what we need to do is assign that which is basically just noise coming out of our mouths because they have no comprehension that that is words and that those words represent meaning in any kind of form but we need to make them understand that this noise that is coming out of them out of our mouths we have that we have assigned as their name is nothing more than an additional obedience command Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before. It's the program that as a canine behaviorist, I use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that I work with to high levels of success. It is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. So when the owners that you're working with kind of have that light bulb moment, first of all, it's an excellent opportunity to start going down that process of, of more effective communication with our dogs uh, and how people can build those better relationships when they understand that if we understand them as dogs and treat them as dogs that actually that allows us to build the better relationship than if we babied them and treated them like children and babies so it's a really fun engaging conversation that you can have with new owners to be able to start them down that path of kind of understanding that thing that's probably more of a macro issue but we can help them understand the macro 
theory and issue using this micro um, issue or, or thing of teaching a dog its name. So what we then do is we go through explaining, okay, awesome, you understand that concept now, that macro overarching theory that a dog will never know it has a name and that it's simply assigning this noise that comes out of our mouth to a, a very basic and simple obedience trick, just how we would teach a dog that the term sit means I want you to pop your the behavior of your bum going on the floor is assigned to this word. I've marked this noise coming out of my mouth is assigned with that behavior. And if you do that from me, something good is going to happen. That's obviously a very positive reinforcement based approach to it. When it comes to teaching a dog its name, we want to take a very positive based approach to teaching a dog its name. But if we now know it's nothing more than an obedience kind of trick or command, what do we want it to be? Well, the way that I teach all of the clients and people that I work with is that the dog's name simply means stop what you're doing look up to me for guidance and direction because another command is about to come your way that I need you to listen to so again when you think ahead of maybe you've had dogs in the past but when is it that you actually use a dog's name well there's usually one of two things first of all you're speaking to another human and you want to let them know that you're referring to this in particular dog so we might use that dog's name that's irrelevant to our relationship with the dog and the way that we work with our dog that's absolutely fine we will remove that from the table next thing it is always some kind of i'm not going to use my dog's name because he's fast asleep on the sofa there we've been out working him all morning but let's use dave the dog it'll be some kind of form of dave stop dave come here dave sit dave no dave down it's always some kind of getting their attention and then i want you to stop doing something or i want you to do something so again it might be dave no dave stop or it might be dave come dave heal dave sit dave stay so what we want from them is stop what you're doing, break, get their attention up to us. And then ideally, I want you to look up to me for guidance and direction. It's a theory and a principle that I talk about in most training videos. The importance of that relationship that the dog sees you as its calm, consistent leader. That then my next kind of catchphrase on from that is that we'll look up to you for guidance and direction. That's so incredibly important because we need them to look up to us for guidance and direction so that we can then utilize our obedience. Now, being able to help get that guidance and direction, that looking up, that is what the command of their name should be used, in my opinion. So the way we teach that is a very basic, very simple principle of teaching a dog its name. I recommend that all owners start from the second they bring their dog home working on this. If people are following along with my Perfect Puppy course, then we use this as part of our Fenrir basic obedience kind of training drill. And we do this drill kind of a few times a day, every single day. And the drill will get more complex and more complicated as time goes on. And we bring on the more higher levels of obedience. But we always start with teaching the dog its name because we want to get that dog to look up to us for guidance and direction so that we can then layer on top of that all the different other obedience things that we need to work on so again it's in that perfect puppy course but a very quick overview of that is we get a little piece of food and we do a very basic law mark reinforce like you would do for pretty much all obedience work so we're going to get the dog's attention with the food following our nose following their nose we bring that food up to our face we don't want to cover up our eyes because we always want that it's that eye contact that we're looking for naturally the dog's going to follow the food as we bring it up to the face the dog's going to look up because they're following the food as we get that behavior of them looking up we mark it with their name again it's nothing more than a command but with name so if eyes come up as the dog follows dave yes good then they get access to the food and we drill that and we drill it like you would with teaching sit like you would with teaching down like you would with teaching heel we put the repetitions in we work and we work and we work now obviously at these early stages yes the dog is following the lure of the food because they're interested in it so then over time we're not going to bring it right up to our eyes we're going to bring it a little bit lower and that's where a little bit of finesse comes into this a little bit of patience bringing it up the dog's going to be looking here so they're going to look up but not all the way up for our eye contact we're going to bring it up, we're going to remove all the excitement, and we're going to patiently wait. And I promise you, if you put those drills in right up at the eye contact, you are going to get a little glance from the puppy. They're staring at the food here, they're staring, they're staring, they get a little bit confused, followed by looking up and that's the gem moment when we get that look up into your eyes we mark it and then we heavily reinforce it with praise food oh he's a good boy yes dave he's a good dave yes lots of praise let them know i love what you just did then we repeat that and again you'll very quickly get to the point where the dog's looking up 
We can then start to mark the behavior just before they do it. We go through that very same principle to a point where you use that terminology, their name. Again, it's nothing more than a command because again, you don't have to t t teach sit. You could teach that with pineapple and you could get a dog to sit with pineapple. It doesn't matter what the word is because a dog has no comprehension of language or words. It's just a noise that comes out of our mouth that we associate with a behavior. So whatever you want to name your dog is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It can be literally anything in the world as long as we're consistent with it and we do this as part of the training. So again, this is one of those things that it's a small micro piece to the puzzle of dog ownership and canine leadership, but we can utilize it as an excellent teaching method and opportunity to teach the more macro picture of relationship and communication with our dog and get into that higher level of understanding and being able to treat them like a dog to then be able to build a better relationship with them as a dog when we do that dogs aren't filled with anxiety and fear because they trust in you as a calm consistent leader which then means they don't spiral into reactive and anxious type behaviors which is riddling the dog population of the world at the minute so again very simple process but a really excellent opportunity something that we can be extremely positive and fun about um, so get out there whether you're working with clients or working with your own dog get out there have some fun with it um, and make the most out of what is quite an easy thing to achieve really quite big results with a micro piece of information. And there it is, guys. I hope you found that really, really useful. And you've learned some new skills of how to train your Great Dane its name. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below. Let us know what uh, your Great Dane is called and also what you've learned in regards to training. We would love to know all those things. We have two dedicated videos coming here every single week. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. And I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Great Dane Show.